Hello everyone, it's Claire here from Dots for Days Art. Uh, today I'm going to show you how I make the stones for my art stones uh, using Happy Dotting Company moulds. I um, just wanted to say first of all a huge thank you to everyone who's liked, shared, subscribed to my channel, commented. I appreciate it all so much, so thank you. Thank you big time. So today um, I'm going to show you my technique for making these stones. Um, I followed Angela's Happy Dotting Company tutorial when I first got these and they've turned out perfect every time. Um, I use a slightly different type of mould and plaster. I use Herculite 2. I know that Angela uses, I think it's Ultracal, which uh, you get in Australia, but the Herculite 2 um, I get in the UK from Amazon. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so important things you're going to need for this are a set of scales, uh, just a normal set of kitchen scales I use, some cold water, um, a jug to mix your plaster in, obviously you're happy Dotting Company silicon moulds. I like to use um, the sort of small, well, large, medium and small, medium moulds. These are my favourites. Um, so I'm going to be using those today and also the mould and plaster which I use here, which is Herculite 2. Now I do differ slightly from the instructions on the packet, which says uh, 200 grams to 85 mils of water. I actually like to use 200 grams of powder to 100 mils of water, as I find it's easier to pour. I know this is made uh, used mainly for making um, models and miniatures and sculptures and things like that, where it doesn't really need to be so fluid and flowing. Um, but I definitely think for pouring into these moulds, um, a little bit thinner than what it actually says is better. So I'm going to use uh, 600 grams of this. I found that's generally enough for me to fill um, these three moulds. Okay, so ready to begin. What I like to do is to put the container I'm going to use for mixing the plaster onto the scales right at the start. And then I'm going to add the 300 mils of cold water because it's actually best to add the powder to the water, not the other way around. And then I'm just going to pop the scales on and that should come to zero. So that when you start to measure your plaster, you're not factoring in the weight of the jug or the water. And I'm going to go ahead and take the Herculite plaster. Keep this in um, an airtight container. It's very important when you're not using it that it stays dry. So I just use an old porridge container for this. And what I'm going to do is just making sure that's still on zero. I'm just going to reset it actually because it tends to go off right in the middle. So I'm just going to take in one spoon at a time of the Herculite. I'm just going to add it into the water. And I'm waiting to see that get up to 600 grams. So I'm just going to chuck it in there. Now you do have to be slightly careful when working with this. Um, make sure that you're in a very well ventilated area. It does cause a lot of dust. Uh, and also if you're like me and you're messy as out, then it goes absolutely everywhere. So just make sure you're not spilling it over any work that you're currently working on at the moment, which I have done before. So just over halfway there. A few more spoons fall. Now I'm doing this a little bit more neater because I'm showing you, usually I just pour it straight out of the tub and it goes absolutely everywhere, but that's not best practice, so I'm doing it properly. So 520 there, I think just a couple more. 561, so I'm just going to add it in just a little bit at a time now, just to get to that 600. Nearly there. It doesn't matter if you're not spot on, you know, a few grams, two grams, it's not going to make much of a difference. So I'm just going to pop the lid back on the plaster there, get that out of the way. Now what I like to do is mix this um, by hand. So with a pair of gloves, very important. I'm just going to very gently mix it all around. You don't want to be introducing too much air into the mix because that will show in your stones. The surface won't be smooth. Um, generally with these moulds, they're, they're fantastic. I always get really smooth stones. But if you do incorporate air at the mixing stage, the base of the sp uh, sp stone can be a little bit um, bobbly and bubbly and just not very smooth. And 
uniform texture so I'm just going around the very bottom of the jug here just making sure it's all mixed in really nicely there's no lumps or bumps just pushing it between my fingers there are a few little bubbles forming I'm trying to keep those to a minimum as much as possible now this uh, Herculite <clears throat> it sets in about 15 minutes so you've got about five ten minutes um to do your mixing and then you really need to get it in the molds um it really doesn't take long to mix i mean that's already a very smooth mixture just a few little lumps there so i'm just going to carefully go through just to get all of those lumps out but yeah i love working with this plaster because it sets so quickly i can make some stones in the morning and be painting them by the afternoon so that's what I really like about this. And I get the Herculite too from Amazon. Um, I can't remember exactly how much it is, but it's it's a really reasonable price. Um, I started off just with a one kilogram bag and I use that in no time. So now I get the three kilogram bags just for storage space. I would get a 25 kilogram bag if I had the space, but I don't. So that looks really nice now. You want it to look like a sort of thick cream consistency is what I like. So that's ready to pour. So I'm just going to pop my glove off. And this is where I do have to be a little bit careful pouring into the mould. So it's got a little bit of plaster on one of the moulds there. So I'm just going to clean that off. So you want to put your moulds where they're going to stay. So they need to be on a nice flat level surface because once you start pouring, and setting them you don't want to be moving them so I'm just going to go ahead and just slowly very slowly move that so you can actually see it just slowly pour the plaster mix into the mold and you don't want to hold it up at too great a height because again we're really looking not to be incorporating too much air into this mix We'll just give it a little bit of a tap about halfway up just to settle it, get some of the bubbles out. And we're just filling the whole mould. Again, just level it out there. And you want it to come right up to the lip of the hole here, just so you get a nice smooth base for your stone. A little bit more in there. It's really important to take your time at this stage getting it really nicely leveled out because this is going to affect what your stone looks like. What you do now is going to make or break your stone. So do just take your time. So I saw a few little lumps in the bottom of the mix there, so I probably could have mixed that up a little bit better, but it's in there now so a lot of it can sort of get hidden within the stone if you have any little lumps or things like that I've never had problems with lumps on the top surface of the stone where I actually paint um, so I wouldn't worry too much about the odd lump obviously if it's full of lumps then you need to make sure you're using the right amount of water and mixing it really thoroughly nice and I'm going to pour into the small mold now so these rocks have been setting for about 10 minutes now um, and they're already pretty solid um, there are a few little lumps on the bottom and I think what it is, um, I took a little bit longer than normal to mix them. Um, so towards the end of the pour and it, the, the mixture was a little bit thick, which is why you get these peaks. But I'm not going to worry about that too much because uh, you can always sand the bottom of them. I'm certain that the top surfaces will be beautifully smooth and the bottom might just take a little bit of smoothing out. Now, if you feel the rocks while they're setting, they do warm up uh, as part of the chemical reaction between the powder and the water. There is some heat generated, not massive, but it will get quite warm. 
Um, don't be tempted to turn these out too early. Um, it can be really tempting if you're doing this for the first time, you want to see what they look like, but just give it time. Uh, like I say, with the Herculite and the, the mixture of water that I use, the 100 mils, definitely would leave it for at least an hour. Um, so these ones I'm really happy with. The bases of them don't have a lot of bubbles in. Um, I tend to have a lot of bubbles because I'm not the, the neatest mixer, but I tried really hard to do for you guys. Uh, and yeah, these look pretty smooth. So we'll give these another 30 to 40 minutes and then we'll see what they look like. Bye. Okay, so these stones are ready to be turned out now. They're still a little bit warm, but they're solid. So I'm going to have a look at them. I just noticed this one has the cutest little smiley face. Uh, that's for you, Angela, at Happy Dot & Company. Very happy stone here made in your moulds. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop these out of the moulds. Yeah, they're nice and solid there. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Got that centre dot on there for the start of the mandala. I'll probably just give this a little bit of a um, sand on the base, but I mean, that is just lovely. Any rough bits, you know, can always smooth off, but the important bit, the top bit, is just lovely. So here's my little one. Let's turn out the happiest stone. Now, you might notice that these have a slight blue tinge to the stone and the moulds. That was due to a little mishap I had, an experiment gone wrong where I decided to add uh, paint into the mix to try and get blue stones did not work um, I have seen it work on other artist pages on Instagram I haven't figured it out myself it just made it so thin uh, the mix just split and cracked so yeah don't put paint in unless you find someone who knows how to do it <laughs> uh, again another beautiful smooth stone here uh, the blue tinge and the little rough bits on the bottom again can be smoothed out painted over the important part which is the top is just look at that i love anything smooth i just like hold these are warm and smooth like a little bread roll straight out of the oven so i love them let's have a look at this one yeah popping out nice and easy they're solid really you know rock hard just what you want perfect to get some paint and some dots on that so absolutely beautiful like i say i'll just sand off the bottom there and then these will be ready to paint later on today so that's my little batch this morning it's taken me just over an hour to make them um i'll pop a base coat on maybe two base coats and then i'll be painting in an hour or so so yay i hope you like this video um please do like share and subscribe uh, to my channel uh, please give me any comments, feedback, you know, I'm new to this, so just let me know if there's anything particular you'd like me to cover, any feedback, if you like my accent, if you like the sound of the window cleaner in the background, <laughs> just let me know. But otherwise, I'll see you soon. Bye!